Hi, I'm Richard Byrne. In this video, I'm going to show you three YouTube settings that every teacher should know how to use. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Now, I am using my dog Max's Google account for the purposes of this demonstration. And we're going to go right into his YouTube studio. This is where you'll be uploading your videos that you want to share with other people. So let's go ahead and upload a video. And I have a video on my desktop that I'm going to use for this demo here. And let's just say, I'm gonna pick this one right here, a geography game about artwork. And let's upload that video. Now we can put it in the description. By the way, if you wanna do things like hashtag geography, all you have to do is just write in that hashtag and that then appears. You can also include links in your description. Maybe I'll say, go check out freetechforteachers.com. Or I'll write it all out and say, you know, this is a video about a geography game. So you can write what you want in that description. Now, if you want to upload a custom thumbnail, you can. You'll do it right there. Go to our playlist, and I'm going to make a new playlist here. I'm going to call it Geography Games. Now, I can make this list public, private, or unlisted. If it's public, anyone can see everything that's in that playlist, as long as the videos are public. If it's private, I'm the only one who can see it. And if it's unlisted, I can share it, but it won't pop up in any kind of search. Now I'm going to say, no, this one's not made for kids. And it's not a paid promotion. And we're going to allow all the automatic chapters and key moments and all the other settings that YouTube applies by default. Now we can add our recording date if we want and location, but we don't need to. And you can see here, you can choose a category. Now, if you choose a category of education, it'll ask you what kind of education video is it? And I'll say, this one's a how-to. And you can even say what academic system it applies to and what level it applies to. But the most important thing here is in the comments. I always recommend just disable your comments if it's a if it's for school, if it's a school-based project, a classroom-based project, disable the comments. You don't need the hassle of dealing with random people on YouTube commenting with things that yeah, they probably shouldn't say. So let's click next and we can add an end screen if we like, but we don't need to. There's no copyright issues with this video. Good, because I made it. And now, here's the other setting you should know about. And that is whether to make your video private, unlisted, or public. If you make it private, obviously only you can watch it or the people that you invite by email to watch it. If you make it unlisted, anybody can see it if they have the link, but it won't pop up in the search. If it's public, Obviously, anyone who has a link can see it and it'll pop up in searches. Now, you can also combine these and say, I want to make it public and schedule it to appear at a date in the future. I'm going to unschedule this one and switch it back to unlisted and save it. And now we will publish our video. So those first two things that you need to know are your upload settings and how to disable the comments. But now we want to look at the third feature, and that is the ability to blur things in the video itself. So let's take a look at the video. Let's go to the link, or the title, click on the title, and you'll see it's hyperlinked and takes you right in here to the video details where, again, you could modify the description. You can put in the thumbnail now if you wanted to. But 
we want to go into the editor and it's here that we want to add the blur. And we can choose a face blur, which will automatically detect faces in the video and blur all of them. Or we can do a custom blur and use it to blur a face manually, like so. Or you can use it to blur anything else that you have in the video. Maybe you just want to blur the things that are behind you in the video, like that. And you can do so, you can make it a rectangle, make it an oval if you want. And you can say it's going to track the object so that any object that you've overlaid it, that blur on, it'll just stay with it. Or you can say it's in a fixed position. And so that blur is never going to move out of that position that you've put it in. And you can save it. And it's going to show you that new copy. So those are three YouTube settings that every teacher should know how to use. As always, for more things like this, please visit freetechforteachers.com or subscribe to my YouTube channel.